All right, let's do some projection mapping. So I'm pretty excited to be diving into After Effects. You know, we first did our, our first show that my, my nephew Alan did. Um, it, was, it was awesome and I, I quickly caught the bug. And so I've, I've been excited though to, to dive into Adobe After Effects itself because it's, it's, it's cool. It's very robust. It's intimidating because there's so many different things in there. And so um, I'm excited to finally start learning it. Um, there's, I'm learning too that there's a million different ways of doing projection mapping and, and this is just one of many, but it's, it's one that's really powerful. So I'm excited to, to get into it. And this is gonna be from the perspective of somebody brand new to After Effects. So feel free to put in the comments if you th think that there's a better way of doing something because I'm, I'm learning it as I go. I learned it from my nephew and from some other people that I know. And if you, there, there's also so many different ways to accomplish the exact same end that if you have a way that you prefer or a shortcut, then, then go ahead and let me know. And so the, the focus of this or who I'm hoping to help with this video is people like me that are new to After Effects and maybe it's reassuring to, to see me bumble through some of this and, um, and, and realize that, that, yeah, we can do it. We just got to learn where everything is. You know, Luxedo is cool because it's very simple. Um, after Effects, you can do so many different things, so many different levers, so many different settings that I'm, I'm going to try to hyper-focus on just a couple simple things in each video. I'm going to try to make it very topical. And I'm gonna to try to only show one, maybe two ways of doing each things, even though there's probably a bunch of ways uh, to try to keep this short and focused. Okay, so with, with those caveats, let's, uh, let's do something. I, th I think for this video, what we're gonna do is show how in After Effects, I create a facade and how I create one way to create masks. I realize there's at least three different ways that you can do masks and After Effects, but it's just one way. And and kind of what where I'm going with this is we have you know this show that I've shown a million times on the front of our house, but this year, as people or people can watch the show on the front of the house, but then they're going to be able to walk into the backyard, and we're going to have the back of the house projection map too. So then it really adds to that illusion that it's the house itself because no matter what angle you come at it from it's going to have that same facade and that same look and feel. So hopefully we're gonna make it look 360 all the way around the house that it looks like a spooky house. Um, so I already have this map that I drew. This is using the digital press work tools. I can put a link in the description and I, I might do a separate video specifically on using his tool, but I already have my map with all the little lines that I need. It's not a great one, I'll probably redo it too, but it'll be fine for, for this one. And I want to start with just a simple facade first. You know, one of the, the things I've noticed as I've seen people's projection mapping projects that I've liked is when we can give it the illusion that it's the house itself, that it's not just something projected on the house, but that it's part of the house. And what's going to help with that effect and, and that illusion is to have the facade and have a, have a good texture to make it look like it's the house. And I want it to be consistent with our front show. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use the same folder. These, these are all project files that were used for the front of the house. And I'm going to use this wood panel right here because that's the one that was used. So I've, I've started creating some organization too within After Effects. I have over here, is all of the objects, the, the pictures and the videos that we're gonna be importing. This is obviously the main canvas where we're making the, the changes and, and adding the effects. You've got a timeline down here. And then this is kind of what I have actively in the project that I'm working on. So, so far I have just the map of the house. I'm gonna add a background image that we can use. So let's grab that wood panel one. It's kind of dark right now, but we'll Fix that in a moment. Drag that over into the backgrounds folder. And then I'm gonna put it into our project by dragging it down here. So I've got a nice tileable object. 
that we can move around. Now, some people will do this next step in a different tool like Photoshop, which is totally fine too. You can, you can copy and paste these tiles to create a bigger image, a bigger piece that you can use. I'm just gonna stay in After Effects for this. And I want to mess with the color a little bit. You'll notice in, in this show, this is the exact same wood paneling we used for this scene. And it's the exact same wood paneling, but with different effects in this scene, same source image. And I think we even used it for the fire scene too, but obviously with other effects and things on top of it. But one image, starting with this one, that within After Effects, we were able to adjust for all these different scenes. And so with when I, starting with this image, we can go to the effects and I'm not gonna do anything too fancy in here to keep it short, but maybe we'll just do like an auto, auto color adjustment just cause it's pretty dark as it is. Obviously there's tons of settings, tons of effects. We'll look into that maybe for a different video. And for the sake of this one, I'll just say, okay, that's, that's at least better than it was. It's not as dark. Okay, and there's a couple. So, so let's now that we have the, the texture that we want, let's make some copies of this. Uh, we can come down here to the, the lower left and do a control C copy and control V, just like in a bunch of other Windows programs. And then we'll have copies of these and we can start placing them together. And this is where you can see it really helps if you have an image that is tileable so that it can line up nicely. I'm not gonna to be too precise. Um, you can copy and paste multiples. So I'm gonna save a little time by doing it this way. Put those together. We'll do copy of up above. So I'm, I'm thinking that will probably be good enough to to cover that whole side of the house. We'll see. Now, one of the things that will help with After Effects in terms of organization and in terms of uh, when it starts to render out is to, to use pre-compositions. And I, I don't pretend to know all the details of that, except that it's, it's a way for you to, to group and pre-compose components of your project. So we got all these individual files and, and rather than having them clutter up my workspace down here and because I want to use it as a whole unit and pre render or whatever the right term is then I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to put them into a pre composition. And I'm going to move all the attributes into this new one. And now we've got one complete unit that can work together and be moved around. Now, one of the things that I want to fix next is this, this image is as if we're looking straight on, but the house is at a bit of an angle. There's obviously many ways that we can fix that and adjust the perspective. Uh, one way is by using the power pin effect then it'll give you some handles here so that you can skew and adjust the angle to fit the perspective of the house. And there's actually a, a cool plugin that my nephew told me about as kind of a small detour. If you go to, to videocopilot.net, then there's a, a little plugin that you can do so that you'll have the shortcut bar to quickly bring up some of the features in After Effects. So I can put that link in the description too. So with, with that shortcut, I can, there we go. And I can look for the power pin. And now if I zoom out a little, we'll see these circles, these handles that I can use to manipulate and change the, uh, the angle of the house. And I'm not good at this yet. It takes some playing around and I probably won't worry about getting it precise for this, but uh, you get the idea with this that you can, you can now 
gonna skew this around and get the angles right. And it'll give you kind of these guidelines so that you can try to match it up with the lines of the house. So we have roughly this line that goes right down here on the house. So we want ultimately the lines and the grain of the wood to follow that pattern. And roughly this, this pane is gonna help us line that up. Same thing with the bottom. Make that a little bit bigger that way. So that that lines up, that roughly lines up. It's probably good enough for now. Another nice feature that is shown is um, if you go into the settings for this pre-composition and into the transform, you can change the opacity so that you can see what's going on behind as well. And so that can kind of help me line it up with the windows too. You've got the grain of the wood going through here is pretty close to lined up with the, that window. It's not perfect, but pretty good. So I think we'll call that good for now. And um, what we're going to want to do now that we've got roughly the right angle and perspective is to create a mask so that it's not overlapping all of the, the rest of the house. Now, the thing I've had to learn twice now, because I keep forgetting, in order to do that, I need to do yet another pre-composition from this power pin effect. I found that if I just do a mask as is, then it kind of messes up with it, messes up with the, the effect. I'm not entirely sure why, but um, it's an easy fix. I'm just going to pre-compose that pre-composition. So we're going to have nested pre-compositions. So if I right-click on that one and pre-compose it again, the naming was on the way too, but um, move all the attributes to the new comp. Now I can do the mask and it should work properly. And the masks is done with the pen tool. So I'll click on that. And since I have this trans temporarily transparent, then I can see where I'm, what I'm doing. And I can just start putting dots and trace out where this wall is. And as soon as I close the loop, then it applies the mask. Easy peasy. And then additionally, we can do these windows and doors too. We can punch those out. So let's go ahead and do that too. Create a loop for this one. Now you'll notice it didn't punch it through like, like we want. And the reason for that is a setting on the mask itself. The default when you add a mask is to include everything within the circle, within the lines that you drew. In the Windows case, we want to do just the opposite. We want it to show everything outside of that shape that we just drew. So I'm going to change that to subtract. And now we've got the window punched out. Same thing for the rest of these. Change that to subtract door. Subtract. Fortunately, the back of my house is pretty simple. There's not a whole lot of features. It makes things easier. And there we go. So in uh, however long that took, that wasn't too long, we were able to create a facade for this lower level of the house, and we were able to, to create some masks within it. And so now the next step is to just do the same thing for these upper levels, and then we can start uh, adding effects to the windows, adding some Atmos effects or Hauntworks videos to the to have things going around in the windows and, and start doing our other fun stuff. That's that's where it gets fun, right? And I, I should go back and put the opacity back to 100% because I only wanted it transparent while I was doing the masks. And you'll notice that it's already at 100%. That is because we're looking at the at the the outer edge of those nested pre comps. So I can double click on that to go in one level down to the skewed image. 
and there's the opacity setting that we can bump back up to 100. Close that, go back to the finished one, and here we go. I mean, the color's ugly, I don't like it, but <laughs> but I can mess with that and get the color the way I, just the way I want it and get the look and feel I want. Um, so there you go. There is one way in Adobe After Effects from the perspective of an After Effects noob to create a simple facade and the masks that you need. And you can just copy paste that on these other panels and throw some videos in and it'll be cool. In fact, we could well, we'll just do that for the heck of it before I finish up the video. I was looking at this caretaker. This is one of my favorite uh, Hauntworks effects. Let's try putting him in there. I need to go back to my, let's put him in a window. I don't have a folder yet for videos, but that's okay. Let's drag that down to the project. Super big by default, but we can just shrink that down. There's a way too that you can lock the aspect ratio so this doesn't happen. It's probably a video for another day. And it's bleeding out on this corner because I don't have a mask there yet. Should show up here. There he is. There's the caretaker walking in front of the window. Now, while I have that effect, I'm going to show you a second way that I learned that you can adjust for perspective because this image, again, by default, is facing us to the, to the screen, but not angled to the perspective of the house. So an alternative way, and this can be done with your panels too for the facade, uh, pros and cons of both. With any of these objects, you can, there's this cube icon here and you can click on that to make it 3D. And that gives you these handles that you can then pivot and adjust to fit the perspective. So if I turn these around just a little, then we can get it to fit what you'd expect from that angle of the house. Cool. So that's all I'm gonna to do today. We're gonna to keep it focused on start the starting point for the facade and the masks. And then uh, future videos, uh, I'll probably do one on the digital press work creating of this map so people can see how that's done. Um, there's probably videos out there already of that, but I'm gonna make a new one if there's a request. Um, I, I, I wanna learn more about the effects, the additional effects you can add to the facade so that we can get, there's the, yeah, so we can make it look like this. <laughs> you know, the short version is we, he's added some, some other images like the black mold coming down here and these corner pieces of brick, uh, as, uh, as well as the, the color correction. I mean, we just barely did an auto correct, but there's a bunch of color correction effects we can do. And then one thing that I'll, I'll probably like to do a whole video on once I understand it better is just how to do good lighting to get the, the shadows and the lighting effects where you want them because I think that's when it really starts to, to pop and makes it look more real. I um, mean, you'll notice some of them in this scene, there's a digital fake light being cast from a porch light here. And there's I think there's maybe at least a half a dozen fake digital lighting effects on this to make it to make it look more realistic and to make it pop. There's ones on the, the knights that are standing here. I believe there's one shining on the plaque. And so I'll, I'll probably do videos on that too. Uh, if there's other things you want to, to see in After Effects, let me know. Uh, I'm going to be more or less following the path of doing this project for the back of our house for this coming Halloween. And so I'll, I'll likely stick to things that we'd see in, in this video so that we can try to keep the consistent look and feel. So thanks for uh, watching and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know. We'll see you all a little later.